What's up guys, c 13 here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Dell Latitude 12 Rugged Extreme. Now when most people think about a rugged laptop, they picture a chunky, slow, and dated looking Panasonic Toughbook. But I mean, with their rugged lineup, Dell is really proving that rugged doesn't have to mean packing three-year-old hardware into a needlessly bulky package. Now I put off reviewing this thing for a while because I really wanted to give you guys my honest and accurate opinion of it as my daily driver. In my unboxing, I explained that I got this thing primarily to replace my iPad as my go-to portable device besides my phone. For that purpose, it has done exceedingly well given that I was ready to make a few sacrifices given its increased dimensions in both size and weight. Now to start off, let me just give you guys a quick rundown of the specs of this specific unit. It's got a 4th generation Core i7-4650U with Intel HD Graphics 5000, 16GB of DDR3 RAM, and a 256GB PCI Express 3.0 M.2 SSD. The display is a 1366 x 768 direct view outdoor readable LCD with resistive touch and for wireless it has an Intel 7260 dual band 802.11 AC combo Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0 card and can be equipped with an optional Dell Wireless 5808E LTE card and an optional Surfstar 5 dedicated GPS module. Now though this thing might seem like the NSA's wet dream. All that wireless tech really does add a huge amount of convenience and functionality to this portable rugged convertible, especially to those using this in the field, far away from any possible Wi-Fi access points and thus any standard Wi-Fi based location data. Now powering this little monster is a standard removable 56 watt hour battery, though there's an optional 51 watt hour long cycle life battery available. A 65 watt charger is standard and a higher power 90 watt charger is optional. So when looking at the exterior of this laptop, many understandably assume it's constructed of mostly black plastic, but picking it up instantly tells you otherwise. The 7204 has a cast magnesium alloy chassis and 80 plus percent of the exterior surfaces are the same magnesium alloy, save for the back of the battery, palm rest, and a thin outer bezel of the display lid. The main reason for its non-metallic feel is its thick protective polymer powder coat which provides both an excellent scratch and scuff protection and neutral hand feel as opposed to a cold bare metallic surface. Padding each of the four corners of both the base chassis and the lid are thick, soft, and extremely shock resistant ultra polymer bumpers. Though given just how soft they are, I am a little concerned about possible tearing. Flipping this thing over, we see the full dock support for both desk and vehicle configurations and the full antenna pass throughs for WAN, WLAN, and GPS. In the top left hand corner, we see the 1080p 8 megapixel rear facing camera along with the included LED flash. Although this seems like it will only worsen the epidemic of tablet photo takers, it can prove invaluable to those looking to document things in the field. On the front, where I have the optional plastic and rubber handle installed, we can see the rotation lock button for use in tablet mode and the volume rocker. I find the placement of both of these buttons quite good and pretty easy to use in both tablet and laptop mode. On the side here, we find the stylus with factory installed tether. Though, if you don't plan on using this out in the field, the tether might prove to be more annoying than useful. Luckily, it's pretty easily removed. The 12 Rugged Extreme has no shortage of I.O. And that I.O. is protected behind latch locking doors with double knife edge silicone foam seals that keep dust and water out. As far as rugged laptops go, these are some of the best design doors that I've seen. They are individually machined from billet magnesium alloy latched with a clear positive and tactile click and every part of the doors from the exterior frame, the hinge, and the inner liner under the foam layer are constructed of either steel or magnesium alloy. The smooth ridge interfaces with the soft closed cell silicone foam to form a practically impenetrable seal. Though the foam can tear easily and the doors can tend to fold under the laptop while open, they are still by far some of the best I've seen of any rugged laptop. But getting back to I.O. Starting on the left side, we have a USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port, a micro SIM slot, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. 
heading around the corner we have our DC charger input and just past that we see, see that Dell really wasn't kidding when they touted their rugged lineups legacy connections a door reveals a VGA video out connector and a serial port trust me I was just as shocked as you are but for those of you who may need to interface with old equipment this is still a must moving on the next door reveals a USB 2.0 port and a gigabit Ethernet port on the right side, our last two doors hide an SD card reader, a smart card reader for user authentication, a second USB 3.0 port, and our quick swap SSD. Out of all that I.O., I would like to have seen a Thunderbolt port, but given the intended market for their rugged lineup, I can't really fault Dell for that omission. Now I'm going to talk about that feature that makes this thing special. The feature that makes even Lenovo yoga owners go, wow the flip hinge. The most striking aspect of this rugged convertible's design is of course the thing that makes it a convertible. Amongst both standard 2-in-1s and rugged convertibles, the flip hinge is rare if not unique. From what I could determine, it's a patented design exclusive to Dell. The only other notebook to ever feature this design was an earlier generation of the XPS 12. This unique design has several advantages over the typical convertible rugged laptop design. Instead of a rotating pivot hinge, which places all of the load from the lid movement onto a single point, this design allows the stress to be evenly distributed to two hinges, lessening the load at each point. In addition, this leads to greater torsional and structural rigidity in the display lid assembly as a whole, meaning it is much more likely to survive a side impact unscathed. A few of the negative points might be that it can't be actuated until the lid is past the 70 degree point, but that really is more of a question of physics than design. Additionally, the design does compromise overall strength over a traditional fixed screen display lid, but again, with a 270 degree hinge like a Yoga, simply not practical on a rugged machine, a rugged convertible will always suffer some sort of structural sacrifice. Though I do think that Dell has done an excellent job reinforcing the frame to avoid problems. Now given that we've been talking about the hinge, it seems natural to move on to the display. Like I stated in the overview, it's got a 1366 by 768 resolution. That definitely isn't anything impressive by today's standards, but keeping in mind this is a rugged machine, it's pretty good. It gets especially bright if needed, but you'll often find that you don't need to because thanks to its direct view technology, even in direct sunlight, it remains highly readable. In addition, because of these reduced internal reflections, off-angle performance is absolutely great. But it's not without its drawbacks. In addition to only being 720p, color reproduction is a little subpar. Definitely not unusable or even unpleasant to look at, but you'll definitely not be doing any color accuracy work on this thing, that's for sure. Now as far as the touchscreen goes, being that it's a resistive touchscreen, it does a pretty good job and of course works with wet hands or gloves, but that's not to say it doesn't have problems. I do often find that my finger simply isn't accurate enough and end up using my fingernail. To get most accurate performance, you really need to have use of the stylus. I mean, you, you, you just have to. The screen surface is also an absolute fingerprint magnet. Not only that, even using a microfiber cloth and clean, a screen cleaning solution, it's basically impossible to clean. Oil pretty much sticks to it. The only plus side, of course, because of its minimal reflectivity and high brightness, it almost never is an issue, except that of when off, your screen will look absolutely disgusting. Now below the display is the fully backlit RGB keyboard. Its full size has the proper arrow key set up and... When it comes to the keyboard, Dell certainly didn't cut any corners and despite being fully sealed from water intrusion, it's full size and without the compromise seen on other small laptops or convertibles. With fully customizable RGB lighting, good key travel distance, and a firm feel despite being screwed into the chassis, it has definitely impressed me. Noise level is minimal and as a heavy typer myself, I enjoy typing on this keyboard more than even on my MacBook Air. And in case you hadn't noticed, despite its size, this keyboard has still managed to maintain a conventional inverted T setup for the arrow keys without butchering the right hand shift key or arrow key layout. This is a welcome design element given most other manufacturers propensity to scramble arrow keys on keyboards with cramped space. The trackpad can often make or break a device. 
and in this case I think it does actually pass the test. There's no denying it's less smooth and nowhere near the fluidity of a Mac trackpad, but for a resistive touchpad it works wet or with gloves on, it is more usable and considering this is a rugged laptop it is a good size. However, don't go thinking you'll be able to pinch and zoom and use other gestures effectively. Pretty much the only gesture I could leave enabled was two finger scrolling and turning on any other gestures just seemed to get it totally confused. Still, when taken from the perspective of a rugged device, it performs more than sufficiently. Now when it comes to cameras, the front facing webcam is more than acceptable, though it does suffer from more grain than I'd like, especially in low light. The privacy shutter is a feature that I honestly wish every laptop had. The main issue is that the indicator light for the front webcam is extremely bright and it's a harsh white color, it's an LED, which was likely engineered for maximum visibility and direct sunlight, but when you're video chatting or Skyping indoors in a dark room, it proves really harsh on the eyes and it's almost uncomfortable to look at. Um, the rear camera, although no iPhone shooter, really did impress me, especially in video performance and of course the addition of the integrated LED flash. It really does make taking documentation shots more practical. Obviously the one thing I wish was included on the rear facing camera is another privacy shutter. I mean, come on Dell, if you're going to put one on the front, put one on the back. Um, so I just think that would have been a good addition. Now, audio is one area where this laptop is quite interesting. On the positive side, it has a quite unexpected high quality Realtek audio sound card capable of outputting 24-bit audio. And given the size and constraints of the built-in microphone, the recording quality is quite impressive. I'd say it's almost better than my MacBook Air. Now here's the bad, and for some this might actually be a deal breaker. The built-in speaker is terrible awful, atrocious crap. Seriously, it's a single side firing mono speaker that does very poorly in low end performance. Although it gets loud and voices are clear and understandable, which is probably what they were engineering this for, uh, music listening of any kind or media consumption is less than enjoyable. To have a really good time watching or listening to anything really requires headphones or a good external speaker. But again, the speaker was designed for water intrusion protection and voice clarity in a noisy environment. Definitely not crystal clear, high fidelity music listening, but you can take it or leave it. Now battery life. Battery life is another area where this laptop falls a bit short. Though I was able to get about six hours of web browsing on Wi-Fi with moderate screen brightness, turning on Bluetooth or cellular significantly reduced the runtime. However, for in-field use with standard brightness with all the wireless radios off, I could get upwards of 7 hours. Still, I was never able to achieve the 10 hour battery life that was claimed by Dell. However, having a swappable battery is nice, though without the hot swap battery bridge of the newer generation 7214, the system has to be shut down for a swap. Overall, with the i7 CPU maxed out RAM at 16 gigs and super fast SSD with upgrade potential, the setup is good. With day-to-day -day productivity, tasks, and even heavy amounts of multitasking and lots of multi-tab browsing, it does a great job. The only real limitations you'll see will be with graphics intensive applications due to the obvious average integrated graphics. It will never replace a pro level performance notebook or honestly even a a Surface Pro. But for those looking for a two-in-one that can take the hits of even the most clumsy person and keep going without so much as even a scratch, it honestly can't be beat. Now before I let you guys go, I wanted to add a couple final points to this review. Um, I've, it's obviously been a long time coming with this review. Uh, it's taken me a long time to put it all together. Um, and I did want to add a couple other things. Um, in my time with this, I've had a couple issues. Um, and I think the biggest one definitely is the complete lack of user support, uh, from Dell, from a product that they still sell, just an updated version, the, the 7214 as opposed to 7204, basically. It just has the newer generation processors in it. That's pretty much it. Um, and then it takes DDR4 RAM instead of DDR3. 
but but there's a complete lack of support. And what I mean by this is, um, assuming you're out of warranty, all right, which this computer when I bought it had no warranty, um, you will find a complete lack of parts support from Dell. So you could call up Dell, go to their website, or talk to their customer service agents, and you could ask them for any part, any part for this laptop. And pretty much aside from the removable handle, uh, there's nothing. And uh, so one of the issues I ran into was I installed uh, from another part site, I had got a um, data card for the LTE, the built-in LTE. And um, so I thought it would just be plug and play. And there was a single antenna wire there, but there was not actually an antenna. And the antenna is actually in this laptop built into the handle, which is pictured here. Now that handle I thought oh well I'll just be able to call up Dell and find out right they had no idea what I was talking about so then I went to their website and uh, their support site and I punched in a bunch of numbers until I figured out what the service tag code was and then so I figured out a service tag for a computer that had the handle built in and actually it was off eBay I saw one for sale on eBay and uh, the handle was available or it was that computer had the handle so I tell Dell I said this is the service tag. I looked it up and I found the part number. So I called up Dell and I said, uh, I talked to their you know, chat agent in their um, technical whatever. I said, I need this part. I gave them the number. I gave them all the details. Uh, and the guy was like, yeah, we don't have this part and we're never going to get it. And I said, that's weird. This is on both your older and newer computers. It's the same part. It's the antenna that's built into a handle. I said, yeah, we, we don't know what that is. I said, okay, can you uh, give me some new bumpers? Because I thought, you know, bumpers, they wear out, you know, they rub against stuff. I might as well get some extras, right? No, they don't have that either. And I said, so, um, okay, do you have um, a new battery? They said, yeah, we don't have that either. They don't even have the battery for this computer. So basically, uh, that is my biggest gripe. So Dell, if you watch this, shame on you. You're not supporting a great product. And I would really appreciate if you would have at least some, some uh, end user support um, when it comes to parts and replacement components. I mean, that's just, it's a, it's a given. I mean, Dell, you're great at this with every other one of your computers. If you need a part for this, just call them up and they'll probably have it if it's within the last few years of production. I mean, this computer is not an old computer. It's still in production. It was just in production until the end of this year. So it's ridiculous that they don't stock the parts. Um, and another thing is going back to the handle. I was able to acquire a handle through um, basically through um, my mom needing to purchase a computer for her work. And so she got one of these, and the one that she got had a handle on it. So I sort of just swapped them out, right? So she still have the use of the quick disconnect handle, and I have the use of the uh, permanent installation uh, cellular handle. So the issue with the handle is that. Um, the way it's attached is extremely weak. There are two, there are four total screws that go into it, but the problem is because of the action of the handle that, you know, how much stress goes onto it, um, unlike the quick disconnect handle, which uh, interfaces directly with the frame, this handle slots in, but it's held in by four screws. And those screws interface with a thin, outer edge of the plastic on the inside and I'm going to show some pictures right here well what happened was I had the handle on for about two weeks not even uh, and then the plastic inserts in those little areas just shattered and then the handle just slipped free and even though the handle stress is mainly up and down as opposed to side to side uh, it's absolutely ridiculous that basically the handle becomes useless because it doesn't stick on uh, and so basically I was forced to use a polymer glue, um, it's a sort of a, I don't remember exactly what it is, it's a type of epoxy that helps to bond plastics, um, and it has worked pretty well. But it's honestly completely and utterly unacceptable that, uh, you know, an expensive component on a laptop like this be so fragile and poorly designed. So again, another bad strike, Dell, okay, come on, get your, get, get your, get your stuff together, this is, this is honestly unacceptable. But uh, anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you're still watching this video now, definitely subscribe to see more on this computer and other things. 
Um, and as always, I appreciate the views. If you have any questions or comments about this thing, leave them below. i would be happy to answer questions in new videos if any of you guys do have any. But as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.